I had always been raised that I was going to do well in school, go to college, get a job, and live my life just like any other uh, of my peers. When I was maybe 11, 12 years old, I saw for the first time that many people with disabilities didn't have jobs. And that frightened me as a, as a child, thinking that I could work so hard, uh, do well in school, and then still have problems finding a job. There is a sleeping giant in American politics, 56 million people strong. Until now, they've been largely silent, but in 2016, one group of advocates is working to wake this giant to change the presidential race. Disability is an issue that is really still in the shadows. There's so much stigma around disability that people don't really talk about it publicly. Keep in mind that most people with disabilities, you can't see their disability because it might be a, a chronic pain disability, it might be a mental health disability. So most disabilities are not visible to the naked eye. We are the largest minority in America. And yet you can say that a lot of our agenda has not been met where other minorities and other interest groups have been able to reach some great attainable goals. It's never really been an election issue before. Um, it's kind of the forgotten demographic. People talk about African Americans, Latinos, LGBT, etc., but not people with disabilities. And our goal is to get the presidential candidates to include people with disabilities in their list of people that they are out conducting outreach to. 20% of Americans have disabilities. And so if any candidate wants to be elected president of the United States, they are going to need the votes of people with disabilities. Respectability is an organization that's about two and a half years old with a mission to help people with disabilities achieve the American dream. And one way that we do that is by ensuring that those with disabilities who want to work have the opportunity to work. Today, there are over 11 million working age people with disabilities who want to be in the workforce who are not in the workforce. And every year, another 300,000 young people with disabilities age into what should be the workforce. But most of them are finding that there are these huge barriers and people are unwilling to hire us. To put disability rights on the political map, these advocates are going straight to the top to make sure the White House is occupied by someone who understands their struggle and has heard their stories. Someone has to stand up for people with disabilities, and, it, and as I've said, it cannot just be parents and relatives and siblings who are doing the work because it reinforces the notion that people with disabilities cannot stand on their own. Nowhere can you really have a bigger impact than you can with presidential candidates in the early states of Iowa and New Hampshire, where you can get up close, you can get in personal, and you can talk to them about issues. In the last cycle, it very rarely came up. The word disability was not mentioned at town halls, at debates. And so what we've done is we've come here to Iowa, to New Hampshire, and brought a group of self-advocates, people with autism, people with spina bifida, people who care about these issues, um, to attend events and ask the candidates at the town halls a variety of issues affecting people with disabilities. When it comes to people with disabilities, I give you my commitment, I will do everything I can as president to expand their independence, to expand their ability to work meaningfully, to empower them to have access and the ability to work and provide for themselves. The ultimate goal is to have all presidential candidates to get on board with uh, creating a genuine concrete substantive plan for people with disabilities. That is the only way that those issues are going to be adequately addressed if we can get politicians to actually talk about the issues. You know, I meet folks who come to my events, they stand up and they talk to me that they're an adult with autism, or they're in a wheelchair, and they want to work, they want to contribute. What are we going to do? We want to be able to say at the end of the day that people with disabilities made the difference between a candidate winning and a candidate losing. Presidential candidates need to work for all of us. They need to represent all of us. And so I call on my fellow citizens who have disabilities to get involved because it's easier than you think to make a difference. An America who has reached where it needs to be on disability rights is an America where it doesn't matter 
what disability you had or what abilities you have, that you have equal opportunity to get a job, go to school, marry the person that you want. We just need to fight on until we reach that, uh, that goal of parity in the United States. Together, we have to defend all of our rights, civil rights and voting rights, workers' rights and women's rights, LGBT rights, and rights for people with disabilities.